What's going on guys, Bingo here and I'm with The Dual Factory again for the fourth installment of X2 Drop, a weekly podcast we do discussing Yu-Gi-Oh! and anything we want to talk about in the subject. So this week we're going to touch on Yu-Gi-Oh! Tubers, what we like about them, what we don't like about them, and like what we think they do good, uh, what the, we think they could you know, improve upon, or like pretty much anything. It's going to be an open discussion, a lot less structured than usual, so uh, what's up Joe? <laughs> Hey. All right. So the first thing I want to talk about <laughs> is uh, t- the first Yugi tuber I want to talk about is Team APS, and this one's interesting because uh, Dual Factory doesn't actually like this channel for what reasons? All right. So I used to like them, but like for me personally, I just think they're just far too casual, and I think the opinions are a little too far out and whatnot. So I mean, like that, you're gonna have that with any YouTuber you watch, though. Yeah, I mean. and and that's the beauty of it. Like the the spectrum of the channels is so wide that T- Team APS. The reason I like them is because they're the channel that got me back into the game. Uh, it's very casual oriented with a, a touch of competitive, you know, in mind. Like they they don't have <laughs> event tops. They don't have like championships under their belt. They just enjoy the game. Like like Trell played Cubics for the longest time, right? But he wants to play as competitively as he can with cubics so i found that that, that, that's kind of funny yeah so that's why i like them um and they did they do the fun casual stuff like theme duels with blue eyes versus dark magician or blue eyes versus red eyes like that was like a year ago but you know that's the reason i like them and they, they just enjoy what they're doing which is something that i find is lacking severely in the Yu-Gi-Oh community is enjoying the game without being angry well ever since <laughs> Mash master roll 4 everyone just has like nothing but pent up yeah it's just all this rage or- and hatred like piled into this community like no one can have an opinion without it being it like if it's the right opinion people agree with it but if it's not like oh you better be ready for hell and high water because you're they're coming after you I like to describe the Yu-Gi-Oh community as a bunch of teenage middle schoolers who all think they have the right opinion than off somewhere. If someone goes against the grain, everyone just starts losing their shit. Yeah, it's, like you wouldn't like any like dance or anything like that. It's hilarious. Everyone goes against the grain, or like they'll fight against anybody going against the grain until it wins an event. <laughs> right? And then, then it's the greatest thing ever. Yeah, and then it's like, <laughs> oh my god, nobody saw this coming. Well, it's because you were so close, fucking minded, that you couldn't even like think of a new idea like that's why the good players that keep winning like they think outside the box and like that tech card like they've been trying to they've probably been playing that for weeks or months and it's just like it's not new they're just actually putting thought into the game yeah it's kind of weird that's where um we see like a lot of youtubers and stuff like that that's where you kind of see it, because, like, they don't go against the grain until they see, like, it actually happens, and then they try to defend the guy who does it, which is actually really funny, but you'll look at, like, videos from hand, and they'll talk about why this card's bad. It's just hilarious. Yeah. Everything just changes on a dime. Like, with, uh, like, uh, new cards being revealed in the OCG, oh, it happens so much. Like, if you go back to certain new YouTubers, they say, like, so, I remember one, it was Summon Sorceress, like, wasn't that good wait right? who was this i, I can't re- I, fuck i cannot remember who it was but you need they, to go burn their channel yeah. down because they're just 100 percent wrong <laughs> they they looked at it and then uh, fire i guess firewall's a prime example right like how long was that card in the format at three just so we had it from perfectly like fine. The and then like just out of nowhere, it took like two, maybe even three sets before the card just became like broken. Yeah, and it's like the effect didn't change. And yeah, obviously the decks that came out, like when did Goki come out? Go- the Goki cards, like the actual like decent Goki cards, we had uh, Code of the Duelist actually. Yeah, right. And then what pushed it over the edge is when Was we finally got it sold, right? When we got it sold and all that fun stuff, but we also needed a. Uh, we didn't have the nightmare one. We didn't have the nightmare. We didn't. Yeah, we didn't have the nightmare engine. We also didn't have the. Think of guy. Yeah. Go, oh, octo stretch. Goki octo stretch and link Kribo. Obviously, yeah, yeah. obviously, cards are gonna come out to break a card, but 
what Firewall did fundamentally didn't change, and everyone just said it was this such a lackluster card. And, you know, it just takes somebody thinking outside the box to break it. And that, that's where I think yeah. a lot of YouTubers, like, they get bogged down on what's what's standard or, like, I don't want to use the term follower because, like, I don't put that much thought into making decks. Like, I'm not going to bullshit. <laughs> But I don't have the time to do that like I did ten years ago, right? The deck, the deck fairing phase in our little group, our testing pod's hilarious because it's like almost non-existent. Yeah, it's like I'm gonna play this bad card because because it's funny. Like that's <laughs> that's where our stretch ends most of the time because I work full time, you work full time, and it's like maybe we'll get to locals on the weekend. Maybe yeah. Yeah, it's like but if there's an event coming up, we'll plan for it, but. Uh, and like I said, going back to why one of the reasons I don't like Team AP is because I feel like that's what their situation is. They're just a bunch of guys who just want to play like super casually. And like, don't get me wrong, I play casual. Person does, but I have more of a competitive mindset. That's why I like other channels. Like for example, my favorite channel was uh, Phoenix Flare X. I think his channel's great, especially like uh, what it, I like his streams a lot too. Because we sit there, he's all about playing casual. You likes playing like Guard Dragon Crusadia. Um, recently he's been playing a lot of the evil eye decks. He's been playing, uh, he played world Childs for the longest Dragoonity and stuff like that. He takes all these casual decks, but he does nothing but puts this huge competitive mindset behind it. And that's what yeah. I really like about his channel. That that's exactly like how I think about the game. Like I want to play a bad deck as competitively as possible. Right. Like right. Ju- just because I'm playing bad cards doesn't mean, I don't want to win, right? No, I understand that completely. And that's that's one of that's like I said, that's like one of the things about like that particular channel that I like a lot. And like the amount of thought, like if you actually sit down cuz like I know, I know a lot of people don't like it but like sit down and listen to him or especially on his streams, that's the best time to catch it. When you sit down and you listen him theory specifically of why they're playing certain ratios of cards and stuff like that. His actual knowledge into the game is unreal. Like it's a just a never ending well yeah, of yeah. knowledge is which what we're, what we're trying to get to on our channels, but like he like he's just there. Yeah. And like the his, his ability to just like put combo strings together in his head as he's like building these decks and like on the spot it seems like, right? Oh yeah, his his play, the his player awareness is I just yeah. think his problem is I think he would do a lot better at events if he had more time to sit around because he's it, it sounds like whenever you listen to the situation as a lot of YouTubers you'll find are is that they work full time. And that's like one of the big things holding a lot of people back, I think, yeah. especially with channels like that, because like easily like, so if this guy had the time that he wanted to to like just stream all the time, I guarantee you his channel could easily have over 100K subscribers. I mean, he's got a competitive mindset. And not only that, if you actually listen, to, when he's on Dueling Book, he does it for the streams and stuff like that, but he's, like, super toxic, and it's actually hilarious to listen to. <laughs> yeah, it, he, he gets tilted and triggered relatively quickly. Especially when people make incorrect plays, and it costs him the match, and it happens so much. Yeah, like, <laughs> like when, when you're anticipating the quote-unquote correct play, right, and then they just do something totally, like, wrong... And the competitive eyes, and it just wins them the game. That that might be the most frustrating thing. It's so funny to watch, though. God damn it, uh, is it funny to watch? <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you'll hear like pretty much every YouTuber at some point has said, "I don't play nearly as much because I'm focusing on making content, right? Because it takes perfect- some, it takes so much time and energy and effort to like." put out consistent quality content that you don't get time to play. I think the perfect example of that is Farfus channel. I really do. Cause that may, I've never seen one person put so much dedication and time into actual Yu-Gi-Oh content that is entertaining, funny and informative. Like he really puts a lot of effort behind it. Now lately it's been nothing but memes, but I mean, yeah. And he, he gave up owning cards like a year ago, right? Like he hasn't bought anything. The only thing I think he owns is maybe his BA card still, but yeah, he doesn't he doesn't actually play the game like actual tabletop. I think a lot of it has the fact that he moved 
that from where he lived yeah. over to uh, Brazil for his wife. But I mean, like, he puts a lot. I think the biggest, the biggest downfall of Farfa, even though like his channel is like super entertaining to watch, funny and stuff like that, right? And a lot of our memes are generated from his channel. His problem is with what you'll find with a lot of YouTubers, myself just as guilty and some others, but they, he doesn't actually know what he's talking about. <laughs> like, whatsoever. Like, if you sit down and listen to him with, like, competitive play and stuff like that, he just has zero idea what he's talking about. Like, there's just no clue up there. Yeah, it, it's, it's like me. Uh, when I when I think I know something, you know, I'm, I'm going to talk. Like, I know the, everything there is to know about whatever we're talking about. And then you, you tell me I'm wrong. I'm like, okay, moving on. Like, <laughs> that's exactly it, how he is, yeah. and that's what makes it funny. <laughs> because because it, it doesn't matter. And he knows. I think the last deck he bought was at the beginning of Sky Striker format. I think he bought that deck. Yeah, he bought Striker because he really really liked playing in the mirror. But like his actual like Striker like mindset was just awful. Yeah, like it just wasn't good. <laughs> I but, think. The funniest part is his streams is when his buddies who actually know what they're talking about get on, and then he just gets pissed and turns them off. The, the Discord channel it's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, yeah, Far Farfa. Like in the downtime of Yu-Gi-Oh, he's probably my favorite channel to watch because all it is is jokes and funny content. Like I, I know he knows the game. Like he might not know it on the technical level of, you know somebody that goes to events but he understands card interaction for the most part for the most part yeah but it's just something to like right now our we have no regionals till july or june or something like that it's either may or july it's a while yeah and i'm not driving more than three hours for regional fuck that yeah it's to the point like neither one of us are like grinding for world's points or anything like that and i mean even if we did like work obviously impedes in front of that and stuff like that like usually in my case like i still i like have like technically i have weekends off but like for people like me who work at like banks you still have to work a three-hour shift every other saturday or something like that so that like impedes on being yeah, able to it just gets in the way and i work five to seven days a week depending and it's just i like i'll be lucky if i get to play locals right like i never stay yeah, past sometimes. nine o'clock like I got stuff to do, but in this downtime, it's really nice to be able to turn to a channel and not see a tournament report, not see a freaking market watch for fuck's sake. Like you I just want to watch some Yu-Gi-Oh related content that, you know, makes me laugh or makes me think about the game. Another one that I think is really good, like makes you think about the game. I'm actually watching a stream now, but uh, a person who like blew up just like not too long ago was Doug Zeef. Zeev's channel, yeah. and I think what makes it—I think what makes his channel like so like actually good right now—is if you think about it, he in his almost every single video he does, he's doing the same thing we're doing, basically recording this. If you listen to him, they all sound like podcasts. And when he talks about it, he's talking about things such as like what catches a casual eye or catches the competitive eye, and then all his ideas are all seem like original ideas, like why the Egyptian god cards weren't played why certain cards do this, why certain cards were better in different areas or different eras of the game and stuff like that. That's why I think makes him really good. Yeah. And that's I why mean, I think he's so popular. He, he just structures his video like an essay. And the best part for him in uh, the state of yu tubing is that that formatted, that style of video or those topics like why competitive players don't play this, like I don't want to say no one else can make videos like that, but it's going to be that gr that area where it's like, oh, you're just copying DZ because... He, if like, you think about he, it, he originated it. Yeah. You know, he brought it to... Like, I've seen it in other uh, other games, other card game related videos, <laughs> videos like that. But he was the one that brought it over here. And now it's basically like, that's his brand. And if anyone watches you and you're doing that style of video, the first thing they're going to say is like, you stole this from DZ, you know? Exactly. And like one of the things like another thing that like gives his like why makes his channel like so good is this guy went from like five K subscribers dramatically almost to a hundred K subscribers now. He did this under less than a year span. And I think it's because not only the way like he structures his videos and stuff like that and how they're like, discussions and podcast type 
technical quality and stuff like that, but he actually knows what he's talking about. Yeah. And like he's not afraid to like make bold moves and bold opinions and stuff like that and whatnot. Like exactly like uh we were saying when pro players put X amount of time into doing this or doing that, and then the YouTubers, then they start to pick and dissect at that point. He'll do this weeks beforehand, and then when it actually happens, he'll tell you why he thinks he did well, why it did well, and why he thinks it won't do well at the next event, or vice versa. Yeah, he he's one of the only channels I watch that I, I don't want to use the term net deck, but he's the one he like he he'll make bold judgment calls, right, or bold meta calls. Like he's Very not a, he's not afraid to play. <laughs> evenly evenly matched in the main and altergeist, which is so counterproductive when you think about it to what the deck is trying to do. But he made a meta call because he thought he was gonna lose die rolls and because of the decks in the format. And then yeah. well another thing is like when he talked about it and stuff like that, he'll give you his theory of why he did it. Especially like like I said, it was a meta call, but he would also tell you like evenly matches one of those cards where if you don't have a very good starting hand but you have multi faker you can evenly match your opponent at the end of their battle phase and resolve your own multi-faker and put completely swing the game into your favor. Like, he's not afraid to make those types of calls, and that's why I think it makes him a really good Yuki too. Yeah. And, and, like, the fact that he goes to events regularly because he he is a competitive player. Like, despite what some people think, he is a competitive player and he just wants to improve at the game. Which is what I'm trying to do, right? Like, that's all I care about is just my technical play. Regardless of what I'm playing, I want it to be as good as possible. Exactly. Well, I think what, like, another thing that, like, people absolutely love about Doug Zeef is, like, he is the rogue warrior. Yes. You can also put you can also put him in the same category, which another YouTuber I could talk about, too, is Asian Persuasion 2008. They are rogue warrior. They'll play rogue until the day it dies. But, yeah. like... They just they put so much theory craft behind it and stuff like that. Yeah, and that's a, an Asian persuasion. That's a good point because he is he's primarily a deck profile channel. Yes. Yeah, he's all about like coverage and stuff like that, like regionals, YCSs, and um, when, UBS is like all the big premier events he'll go to. And when people think about oh, who can I like? This big event happened. Who can I? Whose channel can I go to to watch this video? Like one of the first things you think about is Asian Persuasion, right? That's, I think yeah. I think the last three years he's gone to every major event. Yep, and like that's his claim on the YouTubing community is people know that that's exactly what he's going to be doing, and he doesn't like he plays in the events. So you'll get he he's like he's won how many Kansas specific regionals with Rogue decks. I don't know. Like, he has a lot of regional top eights. Like he just won. He just won with Demise Cosmo. Was it first place finish? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was a first place finish. Well, no, like he's like the Cosmo here. He's 100 percent the Light Sworn. The Cosmo hero, Light Sworn hero, uh, Noble Knight hero. Like yeah, he got. I, he did win a regional with Noble Knights, didn't he? Uh, this was back when they got their final support out of the big uh, box. Yeah. And stuff like that. Yeah. Cause he was pl- talking about last chapter and stuff like that. But yeah, pretty sure he won a region with it. And just like, for in the minds of like people who actually go out and play the game and want coverage, he's like the ideal channel. But other than that, like if you're looking for funny content and stuff like that, for some reason, it, it, he wouldn't be the channel to go to. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's why I think he doesn't have as many subscribers as other successful YouTubers. But like everyone has their niche. So. Yeah. And like we've talked a lot about the casual or like not the casual, but the the competitive player that's kind of more roguish. Um, but let's talk like the diehard meta channels that like when you're thinking, how did this deck do or like what's the best deck of the format? Like, where do you go? Me personally, whenever you're looking at like decks and stuff like well, at first when they f- started. House of Champs is a really good one because Billy Brake was really involved in that channel and he sit down and he would dice with you. Now, not so much. Uh, back in the Dual Rock 88, he was a really, really, really like super competitive player and he was a, he was a YouTube, he was a Yugi too. But all of his content came from his own success and stuff like that because he was the one going out to the events. He was top eighting, winning, all this other stuff. Another good one that a guy who just recently researched, he hasn't posted in a couple weeks, but another good one that resurfaced was uh, Jamie the Kid 00 or Jamie Walker. 
if you watch his channel, he's another really good competitive player, and he'll go through and he'll explain deck theory and stuff like that with his own decks, but he'll also go coverage from, like, the actual events and stuff like that. So, I mean, you yeah. can go back and forth. Another good one's Lithium, too. He's always getting the top players' profiles, and they're always doing, like, deck theory ex explanations and stuff like that. Yeah, so, I mean, more so those channels we listed, obviously, Jamie the Kid is good, but his... He's not very consistent right now because he's just getting back into it. But mm -hmm. that's the, the most of those are event coverage type stuff. I'm talking like if you want a meta breakdown or something like that, like who can you reliably get information from when talking about the current metagame? SEMO's a good one. That's the only one I can think of. SEMO's a really good one. Uh, sometimes Team Samurai X will do it, but not as often. Uh... Robbie Cole do meta breakdowns too, but I'm not a big fan of Robbie Cole. No, uh, for the most part, like I'll watch his videos because every once in a while the title brings me in. But he, we talked about toxic toxic players earlier, and he's the epitome of a toxic player. Well, all he ever wants to do is play stun, so I just kind of disregard his opinion, kind of like Mega Capital G. <laughs> well, okay, we're we're gonna leave that out for now. Let's just focus on that's just the running joke. If Mega Capital G says it's gonna be good. We don't play it. Yeah, uh, like Gishki and what else did he say? I don't know. I haven't watched him in like a year. Yeah, it's bad. He wanted to play Altergeist before Melty Faker came out. Just put that out there. <laughs> All right. So toxic players is a topic that I can't stand. It's he he posted. This was like a week or two ago. It was somebody's ban list prediction, right? I mean, it was a absolutely horrible like god awful band oh production. yeah where he but he just reamed into the guy Jesus yeah Christ. it's like i understand it's a bad prediction and like yeah we can we can laugh about it but like when you're attacking somebody for an opinion that's the that's the thing i hate about this community is just be we talked about earlier just because someone has a wrong in your opinion because that's all it is is it's a fucking opinion yeah that you don't have to attack them right you you want to hear something toxic that I forgot all about that uh my buddies in Decatur can back? What's up? So back in 2016 when I won that region with water, I think my buddy Wade sent him my uh list and stuff like that because we were trying to get the profile out there, right? This man took my list, profiled it for himself, and didn't even shout me out. He just said this was his original idea. Wow. I I've never been more heartbroken. <laughs> It was it was literally my deck card for card the Undyne engine, the extra deck, even the side deck was mine, and I was siding Boxia because I kept losing the Metal Foe Yang Zing, and I was playing Reaper. It was yeah. heartbreaking. I I just can't stand that because like I'm semi involved <laughs> in other card games like YouTube communities like watching stuff, and everybody is so positive about other people's opinions and input. And that's how, like, your are the little groups in Yu-Gi-Oh are, like your locals group, or like, you know, the people you talk to. Like, hey, I got this idea. How do you think? What like, what do you think about it? It's interactions, but like the big names, I just feel like they can get really aggressive, and like it just shuts down the the open conversation. And I I don't see a point to that. Right, but I mean, I think it's like you'll have that in every card game and stuff like that in communities. I just think it's exaggerated and because if you think about it there's a lot more elitists in our game and you can see that in some of the youtubers that you watch and stuff like that, and i think that's a big problem yeah in our game. I, I think that that's a good point is the elitist mindset which don't get me wrong i've slapped some like bad ideas off the table real quick but i try not to be a total asshole unless it's somebody at our locals that i can't stand take your milk <laughs> Oh shit! That's how I'm bad. Yeah, you did. All right, it's all right. But jumping back to getting off Robbie Cole because I'll, I'll watch his videos, his market watches. Like they make me laugh because they're not really serious market watches. But I want to jump back to Simo for a second and going to meta breakdowns, meta analysis, and where he thinks the meta is going. Like he's one of the only channels that does that. He's one of the very, very few channels. And that. Um, and that's so so big because obviously the the casual is a lot bigger than the competitive scene, but the competitive players need somewhere to go to find that information. So he's kind of locked himself in in a pretty safe spot. 
right? Like, I'm kind of, like, going through, like, the list of, like, people that I'm, like, subscribed to and stuff like that. But, like, when you look at it, just, like, none of them do, like, actual meta breakdowns, like yeah. you were saying. Like, and a, a, a one that used to do it really, really well was the Alter Reality Games actual YouTube page. It used to be really, really good at that. Yeah. But at, for, for the longest time, they just haven't... Um, well, I'm still subscribed to Bingo HD. I should probably unsubscribe. Yeah, unsubscribe right now. So, <laughs> one thing I want to, like, obviously you see it with DZF's growth and Simo's growth that, you know, he has a fan base as well as incoming population because of the content he's putting out. It it's it starts a conversation and it it's kind of the healthier side of YouTubing. And then we go to House of Champs, who used to be growing relatively well, and he's been very, very stagnant in his growth, right? I think that's because of the type of content he puts out. Yeah, there hasn't been any significant change, but, like, he's just, he went from, like... Because he was doing a lot of event coverage, and he was doing a lot of this and a lot of that. And one of the big things that, like, he used to get, like, a lot of, like, stuff was the Zodiac Duelist tournaments and stuff like that. But now, just recently, they don't do, like, they don't do, like, the feature matches and stuff like that anymore. And right. I think it's because he's trying to do his streams like Farfas, where he's just trying to be a bunch of jokes and stuff like that. But John Moore's not nearly as funny as Nat Eerie. He's yeah. just not. And, and like, I get, like, streaming is a lot more fun when you have an audience because you're directly interacting with them. And that's fine. Do that. Like, but when your focus and his well being is literally Yugi tubing, right? That's his job. Yep. So. The only content he's put out, like, I can't remember the last time I watched a video from him that wasn't a market watch or a new card release or, like, product breakdown, you know? Like, it, it's very small, and it's not something that people look up. It's just, oh, that's in my feed. I'll click on it because why not? Yeah, exactly. That's basically what it comes down to. It's just clickbait at this point. And market watches is something that we can touch on real quick and... How I know market watches aren't directly responsible to the f massive fluctuation in the secondary market. A lot of it comes from a events and stuff, but they they definitely speed up the process and kind of inflate prices more often than they help you get the card, right? No, one hundred percent. At this point, most market watches are just memes because they're just trying to make rise in price because they do. Yeah, I'm, and, I am a firm believer of that, and, and it's the most frustrating thing. When you're like eyeballing a card, like should I buy it? Should I not? And you're thinking about it, and then who is it? The, the Cali effect puts out buy these cards now before they shoot up in price, and it's like, yeah, like okay, not fifteen seconds after you just thought about it. Yep, and <laughs> and then it's like I gotta wait thirty days for this card to even be a reasonable price. So that's a channel. That's a channel worth talking about. I think would be a lot better if they weren't so eccentric. Which is the Cali effect. Yeah. Especially like with like his intros and stuff like that. And then like how stuff like that. Like, I mean, it's cool, but like. I can't say I've watched his videos in the past year or so. I, I couldn't even tell you what kind of content they are. I used to really, really like watching him because so, like his so, deck. Yeah. What's so up? Did I. I was going to say so did I. But um, and then he just kind of got off of what he like grew doing. And then I lost interest. Yeah, it's just it's not as entertaining anymore. But I mean, he's still one of like one of the better, like one of the better. I use that term loosely. Yugi tubers out there. Yeah, like he's he's got a friendly friendly demeanor and he's positive attitude, which is to me half the reason to watch a channel. Because if you're just a dick and an ass, like I don't want to watch it unless it's yeah to be a dick, right? Yeah, I think that's where a lot of smaller channels and stuff like that. I think that's what happens because like. They do Yugi too, and they think they can do it so much better than other people who have like been proven to like actually been do well. And but they just, they never let go of their elitist mentality, and that's why a lot of channels fails and whatnot. Yeah. All right, guys. So we're at about thirty minutes here, so we're gonna wrap it up. Joe, you got any last minute comments? Uh, I mean, other than we're discussing, if you guys like the content, please continue to follow, listen to us, follow the channels and stuff like that. Yep. out content. So uh, if you like Joe here, he's over on the uh, YouTube.com slash The Duel Factory. And myself is YouTube.com slash Try Hard Bingo. We upload these podcasts on Spotify, Apple, Google Play, whatever. And our channels every Monday. Yep. And, 
you know, it's a hobby, so we enjoy doing it. But thank you guys for listening. If you have liked the video, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, do whatever. Leave a comment down below. Be part of the conversation. Uh, peace out, guys. Peace.